If you're looking to go to the next level with your Evolution 4, I suggest Bob's all new Extension Kit. This will take your Evolution 4's 24 by 24 inch bed into a massive 50 and a half by 24 inch bed. That's over four feet of cutting area. Pretty sick, huh? That means bigger projects, bigger signs, and hopefully bigger paydays for you. Okay, one quick side note before we begin. This larger bed will require standard VCarve owners to upgrade their current standard VCarve to VCarve Pro. What? The good news is Vedric allows you to upgrade the current version you already own to Pro just by paying the difference. Nice. To keep shipping from murdering your wallet, Bob has left a few things that we'll need to pick up to complete this build. For starters, you'll need to purchase a new 3 quarter inch MDF spoil board. And depending on how you plan to do your hold downs, we'll likely need to purchase some female wood inserts. Also, we'll need a handful of screws for securing your spoil board. I used Craig screws because I had some on hand and they did a great job for snugging my board down with their nice flat head design. You also need four 5 16 inch steel rods. Bob has a link on his website right next to his manual where you can buy these. And last but not least, you'll need about six to eight scrap one by twos or two by fours for battens to secure your spool board to. It's time to turn our standard Evolution 4 into a wickedly larger Evolution 4. After opening the extension kit, I track down my Loctite and magnet tool, and then it's off to hitting all the extension pieces with lacquer. Once done, it's off to sanding to knock down the rough edges and knock down any high spots to make it easier to assemble. The first task is to remove all the screws in your spool board. I found it easiest to use an impact driver and once done, remove the spool board. This kit has a lot of little screws and nuts, so I dug out my Harbor Freight magnetic mechanics tray and if you own one, I highly recommend it for this project. Using the 10 millimeter wrench, we remove both bolts on the belt tensioner. Make sure to keep all the nuts and bolts as they get reused later. Once done, remove the belt. Then everything should slide straight out. Also be sure to keep the wood belt retainers as we reuse them later as well. Then repeat the steps on the other side. Now remove the front end frame support. I found it fastest to remove it with an impact gun. Mine was really tight so I softly tapped it in multiple places until it popped off. Now it's time to remove both frame corner supports as well as the frame corner braces. Again, keeping all of these pieces, including that frame and end support we just took off, as all of these will be reused in reassembly. Now we can slide the gantry assembly off the rails. Next, you can remove the belt along with the two X rails. Note these pieces won't be used in reassembly and can be discarded, so feel free to set them out of the way. Then, repeat the same process on the other side. The extension kit comes with the following M4 by 16 machine screws, M4 nuts, and M4 lock nuts. Not to mention, two longer G2 belts. A couple things you'll need and I highly advise is a telescoping magnet and a comfortable Phillips screwdriver. I picked up these at Harbor Freight. I found it easiest to dump all the baggies of the machine screws and M4 nuts into the mechanics tray. They're all going to be the same size, so you won't get confused on different sizes. I did leave the lock nuts in their package for later in the build. Next we locate our EX4 extension midframe support. This one is different by noticing the vertical holes along the outside. Now align the slots of the coupling plates to the tabs in the extension midframe supports. Making sure the extension plates are on the outside, attach this to your old Evolution 4 frame. Using a 7mm socket, tighten down all the screws, making sure the heads of the screws are facing outward. Align the tabs of the three rail supports to the slots of the extension frame supports and secure each with three M4 by 16 screws and nuts. Attach the frame corner supports and secure with two M4 by 16 screws and nuts for each piece. Then attach the frame corner braces with two M4 by 16 screws and nuts for each brace. Now repeat these steps on the other side. Align the tabs of the frame mid supports with the slots in the extension frame side supports and secure with two M4 by 16 screws and nuts on each side. 
Align the tabs of the wire harness supports with the slots in the extension frame side supports. Secure with one screw and nut on each side. Now attach the extension assembly to the Evolution X frame and secure the coupling plate with four M4x16 screws and locking nuts and the wire harness support with one M4x16 screw and nut. Using an angle grinder, I cut all four rods to the length of 56 and 7 eighths. I filed the edges to be smooth, then using a twisting motion, reinserted them into the rail guides until they were flush on both ends. Once done, I turned the bed around and repeated the process for the other two rails. Now reinstall the gantry assembly, and then reinstall the frame end support. Mine was pretty tight so I lightly tapped using the rubber end of my screwdriver until it was flush and in place. Next, secure it down with 12 M4 screws and nuts. Cut two of the G2 belts to a length of 60 and 7 eighths. Insert one of the belts into the bottom hole, then the short belt retainer as shown here, which would be on the back of the CNC. The ridges in the belt will face down, and if you have one of the newer retainers, the hole nut will be on the bottom. Now repeat the same steps on the other side. I found an easy way to put the belt into the gantry, and that is to run it through the hole that's in the side of the CNC, then push the gantry past the hole. Route the belt with teeth facing down on the belt under the idler pulley, stretching it back under the idler belt pulley, making sure the teeth on the belt engage the teeth of the belt pulley. I found making a loop outside the hole and then sticking it back in seems to make this task a lot easier. This is what it should look like when you get done. Insert two M6 machine screws through the belt adjustment plate and secure with two M6 nuts. Now insert the long belt retainer through the belt adjusting plate into the rail stop. Then insert the belt tightening assembly into the upper slot of the X assembly. Then insert the belt into the retainer. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, hold the adjustment nut and turn the machine screw to tighten the belt. Make sure to adjust both screws the same amount until the belt is tight. If you have a hole in your retainer, you can put a zip tie on it and then trim off the excess. Again, another look. Looking in the front of the CNC, the belt retainer is in the top hole and the belt teeth are facing down. And in the back of the CNC, the belt retainer is in the bottom hole and the belt teeth are also facing down. Now it's time to cut some 1x2s to the length of 28 inches. These will serve as battens giving us something to screw our new spoil board into. These 1x2s didn't look too bad, but I noticed they weren't terribly square, so I squared them up on the table saw first, then cut them to the proper size. Next, using a silicone brush, I cover them in a nice coating of Type Bond 2, then clamp them down. If you like the look of your bench top, you might throw it on a tarp or a blanket to protect it from the glue drips this causes. I'm using some large silicone mats I got off Amazon, and they seem to do a great job of keeping my table clean. Something critical you need to keep in mind is the battens have to sit lower than the top edge of the frame supports. Bob recommends at least a 16th inch below the edge, making so the spool board sits on the frame supports, not the battens we just installed. Next, it's time to install the 3 quarter inch MDF spool board. For demonstration purposes of this video, I'm reinstalling my old board and two scrap pieces I had on hand. Bob nor I recommend this setup for yours. Just purchase and install the full 57.5 by 28.5 inch spool board, or else you may see flatness issues down the road if you do something like this. Now it's time to mark our battens. I chose a square and lightly used a pencil to show where I can drill my holes in my spool board. Now install the spool board and using a large square, I map the lines on my spool board of where I can drill the holes for where the screws are gonna go. Next, I give myself some horizontal lines so they all look uniform. Then I take the spool board to the drill press and using just a drill bit, go all the way through the board. Next, I switch to a countersink bit and recess just enough for the heads of the screws to be buried. Now it's time to draw out where I'd like the holes drilled for female inserts so I can screw in hole downs when using the CNC. Once done, I use an awl to mark all of the holes. And after comparing the insert to the size of my drill bits, I found the best one that would provide the tightest fit. Next, it's off to inserting them into the spool board. These inserts have a slit, so you can use a flat screwdriver to insert them. Trying by hand was somewhat of a joke, so I switched to power tools. I found it somewhat tricky to get these guys exactly square, so I came up with a great idea, and that was to put a bolt in from underneath and pull downward as I screwed it in. This seemed to provide the best result. 
To screw my spool board down into the battens, I chose Craig's pocket hole screws. The flathead screw design worked well to suck the spool board into place and these one and a half inch screws seemed to be the perfect size. Now that we have a larger bed, we have to update UGS. Start by opening UGS and clicking connect. Now go to the bottom of the screen where it says command and enter the following. Dollar sign 130 equals 1283. Then press enter and you should see a message that says OK. And that's it. Now you're ready to use it. It was at this moment that he knew. Inside VCarve Pro, I click Edit and Job Size. I set the width and height of my board and thickness. I want my design centered in the middle of the board, so under XY Datum Position, click the Center option, then click Apply. Now I've created two tool paths, one for the outside to cut it out and one for the interior. Click both tool paths and click preview on all tool paths to see the preview. If both tool paths use the exact same bit, you can select make tool paths into one file. Then make sure your type is set to G code and click save tool path. After connecting and homing in UGS, I click the folder icon to open my project. Then I select the file I just saved. Notice the yellow needle shows the starting point will be in the center. Next, I move my CNC to dead center on the board, lower the bit until it touches the board and hit reset zero. Then I check to make sure I won't hit any hold downs, turn on the router and hit play. There you have it, everything you need to know on adding an extension to your Evolution 4. If you like this video, consider subscribing. I have a ton of other videos on learning VCarve, easel, as well as many things making and inventing.